let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. I found that the secret to effective evangelization, more often than not, is simplicity in explaining them. And I know it's counterintuitive because it seems so obvious, and I'd say this would be incorrect, it seems so obvious that we should have grandiose, elaborate explanations filled with lots of precise theological vocabulary. And that's important in the classroom, to be sure. And it is important for some of us in certain capacities, to be sure. But by and large, I found that the simpler the message, the more powerful it is. You know, the old acronym KISS, keep it simple. What is it, stupid? I won't say that, but you know, keep it simple. And uh, this, this has impressed itself on me many times over the years. Uh, I'll give you a few quick examples. One happened when I was speaking somewhere in San Diego, and two Calvinists wanted to uh, talk to me afterward because they were really unhappy with what I was talking about in my lecture that evening. So they invited me to go with them to the local Denny's, and we sat down, and we had our Bibles out. They were on this side of the, of the booth. I was on this side. And we were arguing for the better part of an hour over what I was teaching. I think it had to do with Mary. And the conversation started by them saying, the Catholic Church teaches unbiblical doctrines, meaning that the church is adding things to the Bible, things that are not in the Bible. And I said to them, well, I can give you biblical examples to support what I'm saying. And then when I started quoting those passages, then their response shifted from, it's not in the Bible to, well, you're misinterpreting that passage. You're misconstruing that passage. You have a false understanding of that passage. And that's when it got really frustrating because I couldn't get them to budge, nor could they get me to budge. So after, I don't know, close to an hour of this, I took out my napkin, or I took out my pen, and on the napkin in front of me, I wrote the words, I never said you stole money. Now, maybe some of you have heard me talk about this before, but for those who haven't, Think about this. I asked them, do you understand what I just wrote here? I never said you stole money. And they looked at the napkin and said, well, sure, we understand. And I said, are you sure you understand? They said, well, of course we do. I never said you stole money, big deal. And I said, all right, what if I meant I never said you stole money, implying that somebody else said it? Or maybe my implication was, I never said you stole money. I thought it. Or maybe I meant, I never said you stole money. Or maybe I meant, I never said you stole money. Maybe you accidentally lit it on fire. Or, <laughs> or maybe I meant, I never said you stole money. It was something else that you stole. And with a suddenly sheepish look on their faces, the two of them, I could tell, understood what I was driving at. And so I said, now which is more likely to be misinterpreted? The Bible with 73 books written by different authors at different times in different languages? Or a six-word sentence that can give you five different meanings? And you don't know for sure which of these five meanings I'm talking about, do you? Without me explaining it to you further, right? And they said, okay, right, we get the point. And pretty much at that point, our conversation wrapped up. We went, we went home and six or seven months later, I was speaking somewhere else, and one of the two fellows who was there that night attended this talk. He happened to be the former Catholic, and at the intermission, he came up to me, shook my hand with a big smile, and he said, by the way, I just want you to know I've come back to the Catholic Church. And I said, whoa, what happened? Because he was fierce. He was, you know, like really hammering me with arguments that night. And he said, do you remember that napkin thing you did? <laughs> I said, yeah, I do. He says, that started the process. He said, I was unwilling to consider that the Catholic Church might have something to say for itself. And the napkin didn't convince me, but the napkin was like a key opening a door that had been locked. And that started the process.